creatine everything you need to know. If you're already taking creatine or just thinking about it, there's a good chance you're not getting the full benefit. Maybe you're using the wrong form. Maybe you're overdosing without realizing, or maybe you're just wasting your money on a shiny supplement that doesn't actually work. But here's the truth. Creatine works for both men and women, but only if you use it in the right way. And in today's video, we're cutting through the confusion. We'll break down what type of creatine actually works, how much you need based on your body weight, where the timing actually matters, and a few science-backed benefits that most people, especially women, never hear about. No fluff, no nonsense, just the real science simplified. Let's get into it. The different forms of creatine. Walk into any supplement store and you'll see a wall full of creatine products. Creatine hydrochloride, creatine ethyl ester, creatine nitrate, buffered creatine, liquid creatine, the list goes on. The labels look fancy, the claims sound impressive and the price tags usually higher than they need to be. But let's cut through the noise. When researchers actually study creatine, and we're talking about hundreds of clinical trials, they're almost always using one form, creatine monohydrate. Why? Because it works, period. Creatine monohydrate is the gold standard for one simple reason. It's just creatine with a water molecule attached. That's it. Your body knows exactly how to use it. You absorb it, store it in your muscles and convert it into ATP. The stuff your body uses for explosive energy, power and recovery. It's also the most tested form, the most proven and by far the most affordable. All those newer flashier forms, the ones claiming superior absorption or zero bloating, they might sound cutting edge but when tested head-to-head -head in controlled studies, they don't outperform monohydrate. In fact, many underperform and some break down in the stomach before they even make it to your muscles. Let's take creatine ethyl ester, for example. It was hyped for years as the next-gen version, but a 2009 study in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition found that regular creatine monohydrate led to significantly better muscle creatine retention and gains in strength than ethyl ester. Another common version, creatine hydrochloride, claims better solubility. But in terms of the actual results in the gym, still no better than monohydrate. And this is where quality comes into play. If you really want the best of the best when it comes to monohydrate, go with Crepure. It's the purest form of creatine monohydrate available, made in Germany under pharmaceutical grade manufacturing standards. No contaminants, no impurities, and every batch is tested for quality and consistency. It's what I personally use and what I recommend. If you want maximum effectiveness with peace of mind. Crepio is micronized for better solubility, has zero fillers, and has been used in many of the same studies we reference when we talk about the benefits of creatine. So here's the bottom line. If your creatine doesn't make it from your stomach into your bloodstream and into your muscles, it's useless. And when it comes to reliability, safety, and proven performance, nothing beats creatine monohydrate. Stick with what works. And if you want the cleanest version possible, go for Crepio. No gimmicks, no fluff, just results. How to absorb it better. So let's say you've got your creatine monohydrate. Now what? How do you actually take it for best results. The good news is it's highly bioavailable. Your body absorbs around 95% of it with no issues, but there are a few ways to make it even easier. First, dissolve it in warm water or a warm drink. It doesn't activate it, that's a myth, but it does help dissolve the crystals more fully, making it easier on your stomach. Second, take it shortly after mixing. Don't let it sit in liquid all day. Creatine breaks down into creatinine, which is less effective and can be harder on the kidneys. You can mix it with juice or yogurt if you like. The insulin spike may help push it into your muscles faster, but that's optional. What matters most is just taking it with fluid and whatever you do, don't dry scoop it. Not only is it unpleasant, but without water, you risk cramping, bloating and poor absorption. Best dosage for creatine. Now let's talk numbers. How much creatine should you actually take? Here are your three main options. Option one, the daily dose, take three to five grams every day. That's it. 
No need to load, no fancy strategy, just consistency. Option two, the loading phase. Want to saturate your muscles quickly? Take 20 grams a day, split into four smaller doses for about a week, then drop down to three to five grams daily. This gets your levels up faster, but it's not essential. If you're patient, the daily dose will get you there in about three weeks anyway. Option three, body weight based dosing. This one's ideal for larger athletes or people with more muscle mass. Take 0.1 to 0.14 grams per kilogram of body weight. So if you're 70 kg, that's seven to 10 grams a day. If you're 100 kg, you might need 10 to 14 grams. This approach ensures you're not underdosing, which is a common mistake in bigger guys. Whatever method you choose, just stay consistent. Adjusting dose for training intensity. Now here's something people often miss. Your creative needs can go up if your training volume spikes. Let's say you normally train for 45 minutes a day, five days a week, but then you start a new program, twice a day training, long cardio sessions or heavy endurance work. That higher workload burns through your ATP stores faster and when your creatine drops, so does your power, endurance and recovery. In these cases, bumping your dose to six to eight grams per day temporarily can help you maintain that edge. You'll recover faster, experience less soreness and bounce back stronger. It's like topping off the fuel tank before a road trip. Don't wait to run it on empty. Creatine and inflammation. Here's where things get really interesting. Creatine isn't just for building muscle. It might also help with inflammation. Studies have shown that creatine reduces post-exercise inflammation, especially after long endurance events like triathlons, ultramarathons or CrossFit competitions. It seems to buffer oxidative stress, support immune cells, and help your body manage recovery more efficiently. One study in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research found that athletes supplemented with creatine had lower levels of inflammatory markers after high volume training sessions. And it's not just theory, endurance athletes taking creatine have reported less muscle soreness, faster recovery, and fewer infections after intense races. If you're doing high volume work, this could be one of creatine's most underrated benefits. When does creatine start working? So when do you actually feel it? Creatine enters your bloodstream within one to two hours, but you won't feel a kick like caffeine. It doesn't work that way. Instead, creatine builds up in your muscles like charging a battery. Once your stores are full, you'll notice increased strength, better pumps, more reps and even sharper focus. With daily dosing, full saturation takes about two to three weeks. With loading, just five to seven days. And here's a tip most people miss. After just two or three days of loading, your muscles are already close to maxed. So if you're feeling bloated or uncomfortable, you can ease off the loading phase early and still get the benefits. It's all about saturation, not speed. When to take creatine. What about timing? Is there a best time to take creatine? Most people assume it has to be pre-workout for a boost in performance like caffeine, but creatine doesn't work that way. It doesn't give you a kick. It's not a stimulant. Instead, it builds up in your muscles over time. And that's why surprisingly timing isn't as critical as most people think. Research shows there's no major difference whether you take it before training, during or after. Your muscles don't care what time of day it is. They care that your creatine stores are consistently full. That said, there might be a small benefit to taking it after your workout. Why? Because after training, your muscle cells are more insulin sensitive. They're like sponges ready to absorb nutrients. So when you take creatine with your post-workout protein shake or a carb-rich meal, absorption may improve slightly. In one study from the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition, Participants who took creatine post-workout gained slightly more lean mass compared to those who took it pre-workout. It wasn't a huge difference, but it was noticeable. Still, that only matters if you're consistent. If taking it post-workout helps you remember, great. If you train late at night and prefer to take it in the morning, that's fine too. What truly matters is daily consistency. That's, that's the real key to creatine working long-term. Your body needs to stay saturated and that only happens when you take it every single day, not just on training days. So pick a time that fits your routine, morning with your coffee, mid-afternoon, after the gym 
or right before bed, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you don't skip. Set a reminder if you need to, add it to your supplement stack, make it a habit. Because once creatine levels are topped up in your system, the benefits kick in whether you train at 6am or 6pm. Benefits for women. Creatine isn't just for men or bodybuilders. In fact, women can benefit just as much, if not more. Here's what the science says. Women naturally have about 70 to 80% lower creatine stores than men. That means when women supplement with creatine, the effects can actually be more noticeable, especially when it comes to energy, performance and brain function. Studies have shown creatine helps with strength, lean muscle and recovery in women, just like it does in men. But it also supports cognitive function, especially during stress or sleep deprivation. Some research even suggests Creatine can help reduce symptoms of depression, particularly in women with low mood or hormonal changes. And no, creatine will not make you bulky. It helps build lean, functional muscle, not mass. Bottom line, creatine is safe and effective and highly underrated for women. All right, let's wrap it all up. Creatine monohydrate is one of the most researched, safest and effective supplements in the world. It helps build strength, improves endurance, speeds up recovery, protects against inflammation and may even sharpen brain function. You don't need the fancy labels, you don't need fruit flavoured creatine gummies or overhyped blends, you just need the basics, creatine monohydrate, a consistent daily dose and a few weeks of patience, it's cheap, it's powerful, it works and if you're serious about training, it deserves a spot in your stack. So if this video helped you, hit that like button, subscribe for more evidence-based content and check out the other videos right here on testosterone growth. Train smart, stay consistent, and I'll see you in the next one.